In this lesson, we will discuss Amazon S3. Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3, is storage for the Internet. We can use Amazon S3 to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from anywhere on the web. We can accomplish these tasks using the AWS Management Console, which is a simple and intuitive web interface. This is the pictorial view of how to create an Amazon Simple Storage service. First, we have to sign up for Amazon S3. Then, we have to create a bucket. Then we need to add objects to that bucket. And then we view an object. Then move an object. And finally, delete an object and bucket. And now we will look at what a bucket is, what an object is, etc. Buckets. A bucket is a container for objects stored in Amazon S3. Every object is contained in a bucket. Object. Objects are the fundamental entities stored in Amazon S3. An object is uniquely identified within a bucket by a key name and a version ID. Keys. A key is the unique identifier for an object within a bucket. Every object in a bucket has exactly one key. Because the combination of bucket, key, and version ID uniquely identifies each object, Amazon S3 can be thought of as a basic data map between bucket plus key plus version and the object itself. Every object in Amazon S3 can be uniquely addressed through the combination of the web service endpoint, bucket name, key, and optionally a version. Regions. We can choose the geographical region where Amazon S3 will store the buckets we create. We might choose a region to optimize latency, minimize costs, or address regulatory requirements. Amazon S3 is a repository for Internet data. Amazon S3 provides access to reliable, fast, and inexpensive data storage infrastructure. It is designed to make web-scale computing easy by enabling us to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from within Amazon EC2 or anywhere on the web. Amazon S3 stores data objects redundantly on multiple devices across multiple facilities and allows concurrent read or write access to these data objects by many separate clients or application threads. We can use the redundant data stored in Amazon S3 to recover quickly and reliably from instance or application failures. Amazon S3 is intentionally built with a minimal feature set that focuses on simplicity and robustness. Now we will see the advantages of Amazon S3. Create buckets. Create and name a bucket that stores data. Buckets are the fundamental container in Amazon S3 
for data storage. Store data in buckets. Store an infinite amount of data in a bucket. Upload as many objects as you like into the Amazon S3 bucket. Each object can contain up to 5 terabytes of data. Each object is stored and retrieved using a unique developer-assigned key. Download data. Download the data or enable others to do so. Download the data at any time you like or allow others to do the same. Permissions. Grant or deny access to others who want to upload or download data into the Amazon S3 bucket. Grant upload and download permissions to three types of users. Authentication mechanisms can help keep data secure from unauthorized access. Standard interfaces. Use standards-based REST and SOAP interfaces designed to work with any Internet Development Toolkit. Now we will look at Amazon S3 features. Reduced redundancy storage. Customers can store their data using the Amazon S3 Reduced Redundancy Storage, or RRS, option. RRS enables customers to reduce their costs by storing non-critical, reproducible data at lower levels of redundancy than Amazon S3 standard storage. RRS provides a cost-effective, highly available solution for distributing or sharing content. RRS provides 99.99% .99 durability of objects over a given year. This durability level corresponds to an average expected loss of 0.01% of objects annually. AWS charges less for using RRS than for standard Amazon S3 storage. Bucket policies. Bucket policies provide a centralized access control to buckets and objects based on a variety of conditions, including Amazon S3 operations, requesters, resources, and aspects of the request. Identity and access management. We can use IAM with Amazon S3 to control the type of access for a user or a group of users. Now we will see in a practical exercise how to create Amazon S3 on Amazon Web Services. For that, we have to go to S3. And click on Create Bucket. Here, we have to specify the bucket name, which should be unique across all the regions. Here, I'll specify the bucket name as PAL Website. After that, we have to specify the region name. I will choose Sydney and click Create. So, we have successfully created the bucket. Now we need to add objects to this bucket. For that, we have to click on the bucket. And then click on Upload. Here, we can drag and drop the files and folders to upload, or we can click on Add Files. I will select the file main.html 
and then click Start Upload. So, we have successfully uploaded an object into the bucket. We can see the properties here. If we want to see the content of this file, just click on the file link. And here we can see that web page. Here we can see the storage class, standard or reduced redundancy, and server side encryption. I'm not going to change any of those options here. Or we could change permissions and we can see the metadata. In this way, we can check all the details of that file. If we want to check the properties of the bucket, select the bucket. And here we can see all the properties of that bucket. Permissions, where we can assign permissions to different users. After that, Static website hosting. If we want to use this S3 as static website hosting, we can do that here. For that, we have to enable website hosting. And we need to specify the index here. I've already given the index document here as main.html. And this is the endpoint. We can copy this endpoint and paste it into a new tab. And here we can see the web page of the static website. In this way, we can use Amazon S3 for static web hosting. We can also enable logging. we would have to add a bucket and add a prefix. Here, we can see events. We can add events if we like for this S3. Here, we can enable versioning, and I'm not going to be doing that now. We can also see the life cycle, and if we want, we can add a rule. Here is cross-region replication. Cross-region replication replicates every future upload of every object in this bucket to another bucket. For this option, we have to enable versioning. Next is tags. We can create tags for the S3 bucket. Next, requester pays. Enabling this option on the bucket causes the requester, instead of the bucket owner, to pay the charges for the data. And these are all the properties of this bucket. We can change and edit the options for the bucket here. Now we will look at the options for objects. Select the object and right click. If we want to open it, we can open the object. We can download the object if we have permission. We can make this object public. We can rename it, delete. If we want to move from one bucket to another bucket, we can cut and copy. And we can paste it into a new bucket. And these all are the options for objects. We can also get the properties of the object. And here we can see all the properties of that object. In this way, we can create buckets and objects in Amazon S3. In this lesson, we discussed Amazon S3. In the next lesson, we will discuss Amazon Glacier. Thank you.